Hello, today we're going to go ahead and draw a dog. I'm going to start with a light color. A light color is very helpful to help us know where our guidelines will be and we can easily, easily eliminate those lines. So let's go ahead and go through here and draw in an oval. This will represent the dog's head. And this line, this oval shape should actually be sketchy. It shouldn't be perfect, it, you know, just an oval shape. Don't worry about being perfect with it, just be loose with it. So we have the oval for the head. Let's go ahead and draw another oval for the body. And it's okay if the body is not as large as the head. We want the head to be just a little bit larger since this is going to be a puppy dog. And usually dogs heads when they're young are much larger than their bodies. Let's go ahead and draw in our guidelines. This line here represents where the eyes will be located. And let's go ahead and draw on this line here. This represents the direction in which the head is turned. So we have our guidelines here. I'm going to use a darker color to come in here and start fleshing out all the shapes of my dog. Let's start with the eye, so right along the eye line. We're going to go ahead and draw in those eyes. Now with these eyes I like to leave a little white in them to create that reflection. It gives more life to your animals, I think. Any character that you draw gives more life to it when you have those little reflections in there. Now that we have our eyes, let's go ahead and draw our nose. And totally up to you, but we're going to draw a nose like this right now. Let's go ahead and draw a nose like this. Yeah, just a nice looking nose. So there's my nose. Let's go in and shape the head. And sometimes I follow these light lines that I have here, and sometimes I don't. It depends on how I choose to go with my drawing. Sometimes I like to follow those lines, and sometimes I choose not to. So there we go. We got the head, which is an oval, the nose is an oval, and the eyes are almost like ovals, more of circular, but very basic shapes. Now let's go with the ears. The ears are just ovals. Let's come up through like this and draw an oval. And I'd like to leave a little space here so I can create a little fold. A little fold and a little flap right here. Let's draw the other ear. And this one tucks right behind his head because his head is tilted. This ear is partly hidden behind his head. So there we are. There is my ear. Now let's go ahead and draw the body. So we're going to follow this guideline for the body of this dog. And the hind quarters are round and this dog is actually sitting on its hind quarters. So we're going to draw a line something like this. Notice that it's circular in shape. Same thing with the paws. They're circular in shape as well. We're going to go ahead and draw in those lines to represent the toes. So, so far we have the back end of this dog and he's sitting down. Now what we want to do is come in here and draw one of the legs and we're going to just draw it right down through here. So like this kind of hides right behind the hindquarters and then this part of the leg. Notice the thickness, not too thick, but at the same time not too skinny either. And come in here and just draw the paw. This paw actually hides behind this back leg, this back paw. And we're going to go ahead and draw those lines to indicate toes. <clears throat> now we're going to draw the part of the chest. Comes down and around and kind of hides right behind that front paw. And we're going to give a little indication of another paw right behind the chest there because he does have four legs. In this case, we're only going to see three of them because the other hind quarter and the other paw is hidden behind the rest of the body. So far, we have the oval for the body, oval for the back legs, and ovals for the paws. Notice here for the front paws are also shaped like ovals. And here for the chest, we've just shaped it just a little bit differently. But overall, it has a basic, basic shape of an oval. Now we got to give this puppy dog a tail. Let's go ahead and curve the tail just up like this because he's happy. So he's, it's pointing up. Around the dog's eyes, 
let's go ahead and give this dog a spot. And we can go ahead and shape this part of the eye in. And you know what? Let's go ahead and give this puppy dog a tongue. His tongue is sticking out. And if a dog's tongue is sticking out, usually it will be spitting or even, you know, have a little bit of drool coming off the tongue. So we're going to go ahead and put in some of the spit just to add a little bit more life to this dog. And you know what? Let's give a couple more spots on this dog. Let's buy here, and let's put one right here on this hind quarter, and let's go ahead and draw and shade in just a little bit of its tail. Now that we have that, I like to create a shadow underneath this dog to give the indication of a shadow. And if you have a shadow there, that allows your dog to actually be sitting on something rather than just floating and creating shadows for your dog will actually make it look a little bit more lifelike. And let's go ahead and give indication. Maybe this dog is sitting in grass. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring in some indication of grass. Maybe there's a stone. Let's go ahead and bring in a stone. There we go. Maybe a few dots representing pebbles, little stones and texture. Maybe on this rock we can give it a little bit of cross hatch cross hatching is when you have lines that cross over each other and maybe in the far back we'll have part of the land that way we know this dog's not alone maybe a mountain range in the background somewhere not too much just a subtle indication that there's something back there and you know what, you can even put up in the sky a few birds. And there you have it, there's your dog.